Ferrari, an Italian name synonymous with motor racing. But in the last 10 years, a name that has been eclipsed in its own field by an equally famous Italian brand, Benetton. The clothing company, never afraid to court controversy in their advertising techniques, have built up one of the most powerful Formula One teams in the world. The most remarkable part of this story is that Benetton's success has been achieved under the guidance of two Italian men with little knowledge of motor racing. Alessandro Benetton is one of the heirs to the multi-million pound Benetton group and Flavio Briatore is a former ski instructor appointed by Benetton to oversee the team. Before 1988, neither of them had ever been to a race, but when they later took charge, incredibly, they steered the team to two world championships. The English-based Benetton motor racing team now returns to the company's worldwide headquarters in Italy for the San Marino Grand Prix. In the opulent surroundings of the family villa in Treviso, President Alessandro Benetton is pondering on a few turbulent years in motor racing and a recent poor run of form that he hopes will soon end. My family does not have a particularly love for engines and, 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 and cars. Benetton, uh, in Formula One, was driven by the need to find uh, an international vehicle to communicate in a coherent manner um, the, the Benetton uh, brand on a worldwide basis. 1989 was the first year I got involved uh, in Formula One. That's when I lived in London and, and my father asked me to understand better the financial numbers uh, of Benetton Formula. Then I actually, I, I, I had a, a less intense role in the management of the team for two years because I went to Harvard to get my MBA. Uh, so that was 1990, 1991. And uh, that's when I get, get back to Europe again. And uh, that's when Schumacher comes out. <laughs> The discovery of Michael Schumacher propelled the Benetton cars from mere advertising vehicles to double world champions. The catalyst wasn't Alessandro Benetton himself, but his appointment as managing director, Flavio Briatore. Both himself and me understood nothing about racing, about Formula One. The situation of the team was very poor. The team had uh, no money, no finance. The only way we figured out we could uh, get out of that was uh, to start selling uh, to the sponsors, uh, to our partners, something different than just performance. Well, we done the marketing operation, if you want, but uh, inside of this was a lot of work because it's very, very difficult winning this business because all the top players is here, you know. Talking about Ferrari, talking about uh, Mercedes, uh, talking about uh, Peugeot. But Briatore and Benetton did beat them all, and his life was to prosper with the fortunes of the team. With the lifestyle to match his position, Briatore now takes a helicopter between his luxury Chelsea flat and Benetton's headquarters in Oxfordshire. He's very, very clever. He is not afraid of uh, taking risks. He's quite important because he sends the money <laughs> the first of the months. So I think it's also important to have a good relationship with him. If I don't see him much, then things are going well, and if things are going badly, I see him too much. My role is make sure everything goes together, you know, it's uh, in one side you have the commercial side, the marketing side, and more important in the racing weekend is the engineering side, you know, you have the briefing, you know what happened to the driver, what happened to the car, and uh, basically you need to know everything going on, like in any, you know, any business. Briatore and Benetton's Midas touch is showing signs of leaving them, however. Since Schumacher left for Ferrari in 1995, the team haven't won a single race. Despite an encouraging second place in Brazil, the winning formula is still eluding them. Last season I saw it uh, as a normal transition. Uh, we were coming from a couple of winning seasons uh, uh, it was the first time for us, uh, uh, perhaps uh, we, we were not as concentrated uh, as we were before and uh, so we, we, we paid the price for that and uh, clearly uh, I, I hope that uh, we finish to pay the price, although the results of this year do not make me very confident that that phase is over yet. With the president's vote of confidence ringing in his ears, Briatore prepares for the San Marino Grand Prix.
Within a short time, Briatore has built up great influence within the paddock. Alongside his Benetton involvement, he also has a financial interest in the Minardi team and earlier in the season sold his Legier team to Alan Prost. Furthermore, he holds the contract for up-and-coming drivers Giancarlo Fisichella and Jarno Trulli, a major player in Formula One who still can't shake off his playboy image. We're living out our fantasies, of, of, of many uh, thousands of us. Yeah. Uh, in your boss of the Formula One team, and then I open up these glamour magazines, and there you are with gorgeous women and all that. Yeah. Jesus Christ. No anymore. <laughs> no anymore. That's how bad. Now he's passing them on to our side. <laughs> At the track, attentions are focused on Gerhard Berger. San Marino is his 200th Grand Prix, and the press and organisers are quick to latch on to it as a good publicity story. Briatore and Formula One Supremo Bernie Ecclestone have got a special presentation of their own. You know, another Briatore cock up, he said you'd cancel all this. This is for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. This, this inside is what you're dreaming about, the World Championship. Yes. And this is the contract for next year's $35 million. A year. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Okay. I still have to split the money with you, Mr. Contract. As usual. At Burgers press conference, the questions on his double hundred just keep on coming. What's the difference in the paddock between Austria and 1984? Uh, less girls, more difficult for the girls to get in. Yeah. Tickets. Yeah. Burn is too tight on tickets. It's true. Yes, uh, yes, ten yes. years ago it was great, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the rest? What about the what about the the rest is not important, isn't it? <laughs> 200 Grand Prix ago, you make your debut. What's the biggest change since 1984? Any ambition to make 300 Grand Prix? What keeps you going after all these years? What was the best you've uh, you've experienced in Formula One? How do you feel about this? Are you looking forward to it? And what are your plans for the future? You know what, there's Walter, yeah. Walter can tell you everything about the 200 Grand Prix. I don't need 6,000 times. I, I cannot anymore. Berger's 200th race isn't the only big story to make the press. Rumours abound that both the Benetton family and Flavio Briatore's days are numbered in Formula One. To counter them, Alessandro Benetton makes an appearance to show his support for Briatore. The team uh, is uh, crossing a phase where perhaps there is a need uh, to... to to have uh, someone help uh, understanding and assessing exactly what the situation, the current situation looks like, uh, why it is what it is and what we should do in order to improve it. Uh, and uh, I, I, perhaps my, my position is always uh, is, uh, is today trying to, to, to give a contribution in that sense. The specific technical problem facing the team is one Alessandro can only observe from the sidelines. The engineers haven't been able to find a way to get heat into their tyres. Hot tyres mean better grip, and therefore valuable seconds when the cars take a corner. With no fuel to weigh the car down, and only 12 laps allowed, the heat must be in the tyres, and they must be running at the fastest speed before they start the all-important qualifying lap. We still have a problem of getting the, the, the temperature into the tyres when we have a low fuel. So, obviously, we, do, we, we done a lot of tests in Barcelona, we find some things that you can help. We believe the, the, we can do better this afternoon, but uh, it's one of these characteristics of our car. The tyre heat factor can even be influenced by the weather and the heat of the track. And so the first major decision for the team is at what stage during the qualifying hour they should send the cars out onto the circuit. Yeah, we we'll just give it a few minutes to make sure. We're going to get 10 minutes, I think, we were thinking of yeah, yeah. Yeah. five, ten minutes. Yeah, because the Porsche was running already, I don't think it's so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we need to start have a one or two run with uh, no, no fuel. Yeah. We need to get a move anyway, because we have three runs to do before the break. Yeah. Yeah, you've got no more than 10 minutes before you go out. When the circuit is not too cloudy, if there is not too much cow, let's go. OK, John, we just put the fuel in. Alessi goes out for his first run and immediately finds he hasn't got enough grip. Not enough heat, not enough grip, not enough grip, 
not enough performance. It was very strange to see the inside rear tyre spinning enough to put blue smoke off of it, but uh, they've really got to do something this weekend. Berger is on the other side of the track and finding problems with the brakes put on his car by engineer Nick Worth. Is there something wrong? Was this checked out? Or? Yes, 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 yes. It was all shaken down and checked, yeah. You in the brakes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. These are new discs. These are brand new discs. Oh, so, you know. But these are type Gerhard. They're not type which is what you ran at Gerhard. At, um, they haven't got bent. It's just a car doesn't stop at all. Yeah. Okay, I, I never, in 10 years, I never had a brake like this one here. OK, we'll have a look. On the other side of the garage, Alessi is back in for a brief stop. His engineer is still troubled over which type of tyres will give the car the best grip. Talk to me then, the old cat You got the in the wires. Do you want them on or not? Please. Yeah? Yeah. You're going to run them? Well, you're quick down. I need to close them. What choice have we got? Okay. Are you not running them? No, 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 no. Why not? Because we're gonna, we've got to sort the brakes out. We've got to have big, big brakes. Is, is, is. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not. Well, problem. John Luke says the temperature's gone through the roof. Hey. You do what you want, John. Yeah, you right. Right. Have you right. Right. Teflon. We can do this test, but, you know, I, I can't help you for the brakes, because the brakes are just getting, like, white. Right. 26.341 for Michael Schumacher. Yes, very quick. Berger goes out again to try and catch Heinz Harold Frentzen's provisional pole position, but the brakes are still a problem. Every corner I'm nearly spinning just from braking. Oh. <coughs> we need to push more to catch we have a huge brake problem, and I don't think it's just here. Some others, we locked the rear the whole time. Braking can affect the way the car handles completely, and for a Formula One driver, it's very difficult to understand why that is because there's a number of things that affect the way the car behaves in braking and they find it very difficult to decide when they have this feeling is it the brakes is it the chassis is it what is the problem and uh, and so for us engineers it's very difficult to you have a very short time in which to look at the data take all the information from various parts of the car and say ah oh, this is the problem Sorry, I cannot do what you want because I have no idea how. With Alessi still struggling, managing director Bria Torre comes up with some thoughts of his own. Okay. You see the Ferrari touching constantly yeah. in the ground. It's fire in every corner in the street. My son, you know, see flame. No, we use a different material, though. It doesn't start the same. It's Alessi's last opportunity to record a fast time, and his engineers give him his final briefing. He's currently 14 places off pole position. Let's wait a little bit. I know, Carl. Do you what I'm saying there, John? Mate? you understand? You're just going to go, aren't you? I don't understand that. <laughs> The Frenchman who has had uh, a pretty torrid career, first of all with Tyrrell, where he really impressed. Oh, man, I, I certainly got it right that time. Torrid is the word. And off goes Jean Alessi and out, out, out of the session. As Briatore and Benetton look on disconsolately, they realise there isn't enough time left for Alessi to have another run. His pit crew have got a big clean-up job ahead. <laughs> on the other side of the garage, Nick Worth thinks he's making progress on Berger's car. Yeah, I'm making a change. I can see the problem. Yeah. I'd like you to go straight out. I'd like you to run again now. Yeah, okay. okay. So what, what is the problem? 
Um, well, it's because the new brakes, we, we were too much on the front. Berger goes out, but Worth isn't very hopeful. The change makes no improvement, and Worth and Berger are at their wits' end. Well, we are nowhere. Just absolutely nowhere. You know, you go out, the car just slides everywhere, and uh, just, just, no way. It's a mystery, isn't it? It's a complete thing of mystery. The Benettons qualify in the lowest position on the starting grid since 1986. Berger is 11th and Alessi 14th. We, we, we're not probably today we, we, we came out uh, as, as worse uh, as, as, as we have been in, it, in many years. Uh, uh, but in reality we're not this bad. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be much better. Of course, we're starting very much behind in the grid, so I'm not sure it's going to be so easy to catch up. Actually, I think it won't be possible. But of course, I'm not an engineer, so we have to let the people work. Uh, we need to have a patient. At the same time, we need to put the right level of pressure on everybody in order to react to the current situation, which does not make us happy, of course. Uh, does not make us happy, but uh, we still got to smile. There's no smiling in the engineers' meeting, where it's going to be a long night solving the problems. For the technical director, Pat Simmons, that also means, reluctantly, having to give a press release. Disaster starting from 11th and 14th, but as we saw in Melbourne and, uh, and Buenos Aires, I'm sure that in the race with the heavier fuel load, the car will be a lot more competitive. Best of a bad job. Fantastic, I'd say. Really are struggling. As the engineers face a night in the garage, managing director Briatori has to undertake the social duties that come with the job. You have your public image, and uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but you're living with that. And uh, sometimes you're doing something you want to do, but uh, it's our job. I'm sure somebody no one wake up in the morning at seven o'clock to go in the office. I'll go to the office because it's the job, and uh, it's better go to the this uh, party tonight and go in some other one boring office, you know. <laughs> the, the natural of the job is this one: or you take it or you leave it. For the moment, they take it. Throw the towel in now. That's a long way down to 40 on the grid board. That's true. I might just stay here. Thank you, sir. Over breakfast, the fragile Briatori can't avoid the autograph hunters. When he leaves the hotel for the circuit, he'll find more problems lie ahead. Rain. All previous race preparations now have to be scrapped and the choice of tyres for Benetton will be even more important. Greg, can you tell me what tyres uh, Schumacher's on, Michael? Uh, no. Phil and Fisichella have both gone out. done a wet test, uh, Jean's done a wet test, but Gerhard hasn't, so it's, uh, a bit of, it's definitely a gamble. The gamble isn't paying off for Gerhard Berger. Following the morning practice session, he's becoming increasingly irritable. It is impossible to drive the car. It's impossible, this one. Uh, this car is on the road.
ver aqui. While Berger has seemingly dismissed the possibility of winning the race, Alessi is contemplating starting from even further back than his teammates in 14. Alessandro Benetton assumes his position on the pit wall as the weather brightens up and dries the track. And for Alessi, there's a good luck kiss from his wife. Tori watches the start from monitors at the back of the garage to get a good view of the battle for positions on the first corner. The dominant Williams takes the lead, but Alessi, known for his fast start, immediately moves himself up the field. As predicted, though, Gerhard Berger can forget the race. His gears slip on the starting grid and he completes his first lap in 19th position. Early into his fifth lap, his troubled 200th Grand Prix really is over. Circuit, Alessi is continuing his impressive progress up the field. Larini is catching you, Larini. You keep on pushing. Alessi holds off Larini and Mika Hakkinen to claim fifth, but that's as much as he can do. After starting in 14th, he collects creditable two points in the championship race. It's some consolation after the team's disappointing weekend. Fourteenth and I finish fifth. It's absolutely not what I want to do for for Benetton, and it's a shame. At the moment, we are working very hard to find a solution to start at a good place, and uh, it's very tough. Yamato, ciao. We always try to 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 live and manage independent. Uh, And, uh, and uh, we, we, we're not, uh, uh, we do not like to put pressure on things. Uh, I think uh, uh, that the only thing that we can do is get to the end of the season, understand, uh, first of all, we, we're hoping that it's going to be a good season, understand uh, uh, why it's not been a good season, if it's been a good season, and uh, talk with the, manager, with the management in order to make, to, to, to make uh, uh, changes if they are needed. With further failure in San Marino, the press are already predicting the changes. More say Briatore's departure is imminent. Some predict the whole Benetton family will pull out of Formula One. In the next year in the fast lane, we follow Benetton's drivers to Monte Carlo, where despite the glamorous lifestyle, the pressure continues on and off the track. I would like to get an answer because I'm sure they did well. It's very difficult. Because if it was easy, we would not be in this situation. It's yes. completely the wrong oh, thing to yeah. do, and you know that. You want a steering wheel behind there? No, I don't want the steering okay. wheel, for God's sake, no. And we meet test driver Alex Wirtz, waiting to seize a drive from the big two. I don't want that they are injured, but maybe if they eat a bad fish, I, I don't care. 